Ever wondered why a 386DX processor could be better than an Intel i9 processor? Well, sit back and let's take a nostalgic stroll down memory lane. In one corner, we have the mighty 386DX, a titan from the past boasting a whopping 33 MHz of raw power. In the other corner, we have the tiny Intel i9. Just a wee little thing with its modest 28 cores and a measly 5 GHz speed. And let's not forget the advantages of our vintage champ. The 386DX, with its colossal size and weight, could double as a home gym equipment. Want to break a sweat? Just try to lift one of these bad boys. And who needs a space heater when you've got a 386DX? It's not just a processor, it's a two-in-one solution for your fitness and heating needs. But let's not jump to conclusions just yet, there's more to this story. Did you know that the 386DX processor doubles as a space heater? Yes, it's true. The 386DX, with its power-hungry design, can warm your room in the winter faster than you can say Intel i9. Who needs a fancy heating system when you have this hunk of silicon at your disposal? Not only does it process data, but it also ensures you're cozy while doing it. And let's talk about size. In a world where everything is getting smaller and more compact, the 386DX stands firm reminding us of the golden days when things were built to last. Its imposing size makes it practically impossible to misplace. I mean, have you ever tried to lose a brick? That's the 386DX for you. Now onto its weight. The 386DX serves as a great workout tool, especially when moving it from one place to another. Forget about gym memberships or fancy workout equipment. Just try lugging around a 386DX a few times a day. You'll be in shape faster than you can say, 386DX. Plus, you'll have biceps that'll make any gym rat green with envy. But, the benefits don't stop there. The 386DX is also a great conversation starter. Imagine the amount of street cred you'd have when you tell your friends you're still using a 386DX. They'll be so amazed they might even forget to ask why you're not using an Intel i9. And if they do ask, you can always divert their attention by flexing your 386DX-induced biceps. Finally, the 386DX is a relic of the past, a piece of history that tells a story. It's like having a piece of the Berlin Wall or a dinosaur fossil on your desk. It's a constant reminder of how far we've come and the leaps and bounds technology has made over the years. So far it seems the 386DX is a clear winner. But let's keep digging, shall we? After all, who wouldn't want a processor that doubles as a heater, a workout tool, a conversation starter, and a piece of history? So, what's the final verdict? Is the 386DX really better than the Intel i9? Well, let's take a whimsical journey back to the points we've covered. Firstly, the 386DX processor is a relic from a simpler time. A time when your computer took up half your desk and the other half was covered in floppy disks. Ah, the good old days of waiting for that one single program to load while you could have a shower, cook dinner, and learn a new language. And let's not forget the sheer thrill of the 386DX's speed, a whopping 33 megahertz. Yes, you heard right, 33. And to think, the Intel i9 has the audacity to run at speeds of up to 5 gigahertz. It's like comparing a leisurely stroll to a rocket-propelled sprint, the nerve. Then there's the 386DX's advanced memory management. Who needs 16 gigabytes of RAM when you can have a whole one megabyte? Just think of all the exciting things you could do with that, like, um, run a calculator, maybe even a text editor if you're feeling adventurous. And let's not neglect the 386DX's power efficiency. Sure, it's not exactly efficient in the modern sense, but who needs efficiency when you can have a processor that's also a miniature space heater? But perhaps the most compelling argument for the 386DX is its robustness. Drop an Intel i9 and it might shatter into a million pieces, but drop a 386DX and you'll probably just end up with a hole in your floor. So in a world where we're constantly racing towards the next best thing, isn't there something refreshing about a processor that's content with just being? The 386DX doesn't need to be the fastest, the most efficient, or even the most practical. It's just happy being itself, a charming piece of tech history. So there you have it, folks. The 386DX processor is clearly superior in its own unique, outdated, and utterly impractical way.